He's playing hooky to come see the new 454. And he's pretty excited too. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Nick's Garage. Nick's got a lot of great stuff in the shop today, and there's a Chevy 454 on the dyno for testing later. Come on in and have a look around. Welcome to my show, you guys, my viewers. I wanna just show you a little demonstration that, that I do every time I build an engine. It's time for Nick's Tips! And of course when I do a lot of 440s, when I prime them, the oil comes up to the side of the head and over the exhaust manifold or over the exhaust ports or whatever. So I've made my own valve cover. I cut it open like so. So when I prime it, I can see the oil coming up to the shaft. Because that has to be, you know, you have to be sure that the oil comes to the shafts. Especially when you put new cam bearings. You gotta line up the hole through the uh, cam bearing, it lines up with the cam. Like for example, on one side when you do it, you line it up exactly like this, top dead center, on one side, and then when you turn the crank a few more times, it, oil comes on the other side. But for this example, I've already done this test, so I know it's, gone, or it's working on both sides. But I've done a little demonstration so I can show you guys. And at the same time, I installed an oil pressure gauge. And a lot of these big block Mopars, I like to get about 65 to 70 pounds of pressure. And in this case, I've done it, and uh, we only had 50 pounds of pressure. So my client assembled this engine, brought it here for me to put on a dynamometer. So he's also asking me to prime the engine also. So we put the oil in, of course, I checked it, I primed it, and we only had 50 pounds. The reason why is because he had this uh, purple spring installed in the uh, oil pump. So to get a high pressure on a Mopar, big block, you install a black spring, which I have, to bring it to 65 to 70 foot pounds. So I'm gonna make a demonstration and see what happens. So we need to spin the oil pump. Of course, the engine's not running. So I use an electric drill with a shaft that was designed to prime the pump. So we remove the distributor, the oil pump gear. Then we go into the pump like so. Watch this. That's a lot of oil that the shaft. And at the same time, I look at the gauge, like so. 60, which is pretty good. 60 pounds is pretty good. Anyways, uh, we're gonna see real life pressure when we put on the dynamometer and take it from there. He's brought his own oil I've installed, which is a hot rod classic, 20W50, uh, with zinc, of course. I put it in and uh, we check the pressure. We have 60 pounds. I believe it's gonna be fine, but anyways, we're gonna see it on the dynamometer with the RPM running on its own, and of course, when the engine heats up, and we're gonna see. So I made these valve covers, I prime it, I see the oil is good, then of course, I do the same for the other side. And of course, every engine I built here in my shop, I prime every engine before it goes on a dynamometer, just to make sure I got the pressure. You know, sometimes you can forget a plug in an oil gallery, and uh, of course, once you prime it, you won't have the pressure you're looking for. So before you go on the dyno, look for the problem before you do all the work in getting on the dyno, and then you find out you got no oil pressure. And there you have it. And this is what we do all the time when we build an engine. Well, we've got the 69 roll runner here. Pierre wanted me to also convert his front end, they used to have uh, drum brakes in the front. And of course, they, we've taken out the drum brakes, which are right here. He wanted me to install power disc brakes in the front. So we're adding a power brake booster, another master cylinder, and of course, converted to disc brakes that came from a late model A-body duster. And it does the job. I've done a few of these conversions to a lot of B-bodies, E-bodies, like my Challenger, the Kawashi. That also came with front drum brakes. I've also converted it to uh, e-body front disc brakes. That's done. And of course, now we're doing it for Pierre on his road runner. This is the car that came with drums up front and discs in the back with the uh, uh, racing setup that he had before or whatever. Anyways, doesn't matter. We took it all off. And of course, we're converting drum brakes in the back 
and disc brakes in the front. And like most cars today, they come with four wheel disc. Like of course, Gaetan's Roadrunner here, he's got four wheel discs. But he's happy with it, so he's good. Not only are we going from drums to discs, we're also going from manual steering, which is this steering box here, and going also to power steering. Of course, again, we're going with the original items. That's what Pierre wants. He wants, of course, power brakes, power steering, power disc brakes, I should say. And of course, today we want more luxury. You know, we're getting older. We want to stop easier. We want to steer easier. So parts of life, obviously, we get older. And of course, this is what we're doing for Pierre. We have some of these uh, original pieces that came from the old B-bodies in stock. So I had one here, I've located him one for him here in my shop. And of course, you've got a one for a B-body. So I've, all I need right now is a power steering pump and another uh, pulley on it. So that we have, we're gonna get. We got the steering box. And of course, we took out his drums. We're going to disc brakes. I've got him also a power brake booster and a master cylinder. And then of course, he's gonna have uh, more luxury on this car than he had before. Yeah, he's gonna have a uh, stop easier. And of course, turn and park the car much easier with the power steering. And of course, uh, with my keeper underneath the hood, it's gonna be more than a, a pleasure to drive this car, let me tell you. Regular viewers will have noticed a 73 Corvette in the background in Nick's shop lately. The 454 big block Chevy that powers the orange Stingray is on the dyno today for a final test and Nick can't wait to get started. All right, we've got our uh, 454 here on the dynamometer for uh, quite a few days here. So Steven, the owner of the 73 vet and his son Logan are here to see this in person getting running on the dynamometer. Of course, it's a mild 454 with the original cast iron intake. It's the oval port uh, cylinder heads. We raised the compression up to 180 psi by using small dome pieces than what it used to have with the flat tops. Of course, he's got the headers and a little cam hydraulic lifters. With, uh, of course, we also bought a new jet performance carburetor, which is an 800 CFM. So we're gonna perform a test right now with Steven here. He knows the results, but uh, of course, how many of you guys out there were waiting for us to, uh, waiting for you guys who wanted to see the results on this. So we're gonna make a few pulls right now, and we're gonna see what we're gonna get out of it. So Stephen, what do you say? You're looking forward to see it run? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen this thing run, I think, since like when I bring it, August. Okay. And we dropped it off and I said I'm going to leave it here in Nick's hands. Uh, and I actually found Nick on YouTube, oh. random scrolling. Okay. Found Nick, started watching his videos maybe eight months, a year ago. Okay. And I said, now this is the guy who's got to rebuild my engine. So I came up from Toronto to bring my engine to Nick. I don't think I trust anybody else with it. So looking forward to seeing the results today. Okay, so it's let's get a mix of tests. And after all the people are asking me, why is the car here for such a long time? At the same time, I oh. said, I told Steve, I'm gonna keep the car here for the winter, do the steering, do the suspension, and of course, removal, build the engine and reinstallation of the uh, engine. Well, it's so, like you always say, right? What a customer shows up with, a list. And oh, I dropped course. the list, of 10 pages long, so, <laughs> and I just looked at the car, looks phenomenal, great Thank work. You. So I'm and excited, very excited. Nothing new to me, man. Everybody comes in for one item, then the list comes out. Okay, let's let's warm it up. We don't have a choke. I tied it open right now, so I'm just gonna warm it up, holding the gas pedal, and then after that, we're gonna do our tests. Sounds good to me. Okay, so uh, you guys ready to hear it run? Ready to All right. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's warm it up. I'm gonna put my O2 sensor on. We got that Petrocanda 94 octane in it. All need to keep running that. It's yeah. Okay, yeah, and we played the timing from 36 to 45. Here we go. And this is a bulletproof glass. It's an inch and a quarter Yeah, thing. so nothing comes through. That's right. You get a piston to the base. Yeah. See, this is the oil pressure. Come over here, buddy, so you can see. There's your vacuum. 
That's our fuel pressure uh, mechanical gauges. That's the water temperature. Oil sump, we don't have the oil temperature. There's the battery voltage. That's your power, there's your torque, RPM. And there's the air fuel ratio right now with the uh, on one side. I had your water pump rebuilt. I put your new bypass hose. You don't want to put an engine together with a, an old water pump. Right. You're, you're there now, you do it. And yes. I, re, I rebuilt the same pump, okay? As well as being the owner of the 454 Corvette, Steve is big in the Corvette online community. Yeah, it's like a buy, sell, discussion group. We've got a couple of groups, two or three Corvette groups. Do you want to give them a shout out? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, all the buy, sell guys that have been interested and have been watching these videos from Nick's Garage that I've been posting feverishly, uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. And when you need Corvette work, come up to Commando, we'll uh, buy you some Tim Hortons great coffee and Nick will, uh, Nick will do the work for you. We try to do our best with the basic 454 here, like I was saying before. It's hard to get over 400 horsepower with the uh, cast iron intake manifold. But anyways, we've got it on. We wanted to keep it simple. We want to keep the same air cleaner, the same hood, keep it stock appearance. And of course, we're hoping to make at least just over 400 horsepower. And let's see how it goes. More than a few guys were telling Steve he'd never make 400 horsepower with the original cast iron intake manifold. But Nick's dyno always tells the truth. And we had to balance that, and the water was balanced. When I picked it up, I think the owner didn't realize the harmonic balancer was broken. Oh yeah? So I actually drove it. Something doesn't feel right. Harmonic balancer was broken. Yeah, this one's good. The guy who uh, balances the crank, it's the same one. He looks at it, if it doesn't wobble, and he, he has a thing that he pulls That's on it, and uh, he says, Nick, I, because I said something rubber looked funny, he goes, no, it's good. And we beat it, we've beaten it here quite a bit, you know, and uh, like I said, so many tests. But that's the thing with these old cars, like you pick them up. And yeah. We joke about them. We say they're yeah. the, the labor of love, but also the money pit, right? Because yes. somebody, congratulations to the club owning a Corvette. Get your wallet out, because they're going to need it for life, right? That's right. There's spark plugs, new spark plugs. We got AC Delcos. We have to change the wiring too? Yes, I changed the wiring too. I changed the spark plugs. I want to put in the engine and have one shot, like, Turn key and go. All I got to do now is tune it in the car with your transmission uh, on a hotter temperature and uh, then make it more drivable, of course. It's no make fun to put it in, take it out, put it in, take it yes, out. Yes, that's it's right. Labor on yeah, it yeah, yeah. It's a big job, you know. Okay, we're going to make the test right now. Here we go. I had one question. Is yep. school today? Uh, let's call it a professional learning day. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing hooky to come see the new 454. He's pretty excited too, because he'll inherit this car someday. That was the whole point of it. We'll build it together. Uh, the things we can't build, some things we need experts for, but we'll wrench on it together and then someday he'll be the one driving it. Right? Hey, he'll bore it for prom and uh, you know, leave the car out to go to date night on Fridays. Right? Yeah, buddy. Are you ready? Well, that's a good idle too. So, A lot of work it's for so nothing. beautiful with the vacuum. Yeah, man. We're gonna, it's, gonna we're gonna make it work. Yeah, man. People tell me, yeah, go put a big cam, make more power. Yeah, but you got you can put a bigger cam. But if anything cannot feed it the air, what's the purpose? But that's the soul. Yeah, like the exactly. The soul of a '73 Corvette is exactly vacuum activated headlights, vacuum activated grabber. Like that's that's what made the car the car. That's you right. You take all that away, you switch it all with electronics. You might as well just go buy a Tesla and park the that's Corvette. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You want to stay with old school, and that's what Absolutely. we have. Old school. Exactly. That's why she's here. Vasily, I'm ready. Ready? Everybody? Let's go. Let's here we go. go. Oh, yeah. Ready?
explore pops up right here. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> We're gonna do it again. 399.9. Look at that torque. At 48. And you see you don't have to rev it high. <laughs> We're making another one back to back, okay? This is something, eh? Look at this. My goal is to get over 400 and we got stuck at 399.9. But then again, that was the first test. Now we're gonna make another one back to back and hopefully we get over 400. And your torque numbers are up there too. You see that? Look at that. Yo, look at that. I think we should go even less. The torque is even before 2800. So we're gonna start at 2600 RPM right now. Okay. Here we go. 2800, 500. <laughs> <laughs> Promers 2500 to 5200 RPMs. Let's go. Looks like the torque is coming way below 2800. So uh, as you can see here, it's 504 or 28. So we're gonna start at 2,500 and uh, we'll do the test again. Let's hit that 400 horsepower. We got the 500 plus torque, let's get the 400. So let's do the second test of the day and we're gonna start it at an early RPM and let's take it from there. Okay, here we go. See that there. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's what I was saying to Vasily. I think air conditioning is in my future because running this on the highway right underneath your legs yeah. on a summer day, you want the teeth cuffs off, you're you better be in shorts because yeah. you're sweating. You don't want my help you the, uh, the ceramic. ceramic. That's right. That's why I wanted them ceramic That's coated. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then I think when I do the interior, we'll uh, insulate the floors. Okay. Floor pan. That's great stuff, Nick. Those numbers are awesome. Oh, you know, when you got a, this is rated from the factory, 275 net horsepower, because in 1972 and newer, the cars were rated the net horsepower. In other words, an engine with the alternator and a water pump, the way the engine should run. But in this case, we don't have the uh, uh, water pump or the uh, alternator. So it's giving us just over 400 horsepower. But reality, so if you're rated net horsepower 275, and okay, because we don't have, if we were to test it the same way, we would have been about 285 to 294, 293 horsepower. So here we got over four, over 100 horsepower. So I'm sure you're gonna feel the difference on this thing on the road. Well, we were saying too, when we bought the car originally, we've only ever known it in its original condition, which was a 46 year old block with 100,000 miles. So having a brand new 400 horsepower block with 500 torque, yeah. we're gonna have to learn to drive the car again. That's I think, right. Pretty much. Now, of course, we updated the push rods. Uh, we went to a 3 h push rod, of course. And of course, we put new valve sprays. We did the valve job, a little mild porting. And that's all. Of course, we stayed with the cast iron intake manifold. Of course, Steve added the HEI ignition, so it's going to be a nice, uh, nice driver. That's for sure. I know I challenged around, stand around the cast iron. 
and you proved that it was doable. So I think there's a lot of people in the groups and the Corvette owners that are going to take a second look and say, how'd they do that? Yeah. <laughs> You know, like some, I've noticed, uh, I read a lot of comments and a lot of people have noticed your engine in the engine room and they saw the cast iron intake. A few viewers were saying like, Nick, with that uh, cast iron intake, eh, you're going to push it for 400? Eh, probably they're telling me good luck. Those guys know their stuff. But then again, there'll be other comments, people telling me, oh, come on, you could do miracles. But not really. This is an intake manifold that was not designed for all our performance, but we stayed with it. We wanted to stay with the same hood, same air cleaner, and this is what we got. So, Steven, if you're happy, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. Right. He looks pretty happy too. All right. Well, Logan, what do you think? It's all good? All right. There you go. It's my pleasure, Stephen. I want to thank you. Thank you for coming. Logan, thumbs up. He seems to be pretty happy. You know, I'm going to ask him about driving it around with me all summer, so it'll be good. Yeah. you going to get it back and get it out. So the final numbers are in for the 73 454. 404.4 horsepower and 510.6 torque. And Nick's working on some other Chevys too. We have just done a 427 much earlier. Uh, we're not gonna go any uh, further with the engine build on the 427 because my customer decided to take it home the way it is. The 454 is done here for Steven. And then after that, I've got Jeff's 350 small block Chevy to put on next on the dyno. But right now I gotta do another engine before uh, Jeff. And uh, anyways, we've got Chevy after Chevy after Chevy lately. Good. There we go. We more in here. There we go. There we go. And I've done a few vets, let me tell you. Good. And these are yours, Steven. There Thank you very go. Much, Nick. You're welcome. This is a Turbo 400. That's a heavy duty. Okay. You have a Turbo 350. This is a 400. See there when it's uh, awkward shape oh, yeah, in yeah. the corners. Yeah. No, this is a heavy duty transmission. And you know the frame is very clean on this car, right? I, got I, I, I had some vets here, man. Well, really they, ride, cool. they either ride out at the bird cage yeah, or they ride yeah. out right behind. I've seen a bunch. Yes. They ride out back here, and guys will literally put it in drive. Yes. And the car will just break. Is that right, eh? It just drops right down. No, no, no not this ground. one. Not this one. Yeah, it is no, very this clean. This one, I, I mean, for the price I paid, the frame was beautiful. I had one little spot. I don't remember where it was, but it was somewhere along the rail, and I actually was about the size of a okay. quarter, and I actually patched it. She well, was my you know. age. She had a couple of creaks, a couple of leaks. Yeah, that's right, eh? <laughs> you know what I was just thinking? If the torque over the seal is leaking, I better change it before I put it in. Look, I see it's all Something, wet here. Something's wet here, yeah. Okay. We'll look into that. And you, you think we're good with that pumpkin? We'll just leave that oh, one. Oh, no, I think you're good. Okay. You're good. Okay. You don't need a higher stall torque converter. Okay. I think the, the engine speaks for itself. It's going to be good. I can't wait to drive this car. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. An orange vet with a big block, uh, big block 454. Numbers that's, matching. That's right. That's yes, right. And I did not take the block for that reason. And then we got, uh, like I told you, we took out the uh, 43 thou head gaskets. We installed the uh, Mr. Gasket made some at, uh, which my brother Philip located. They're 20 thou. And we brought up the uh, cylinder pressure, uh, uh, five PSI cylinder pressure. And I've knocked us over to 400. So, you know, I didn't want to- 180 PSI now, right? Eh? Yeah, 180 PSI. And you know what? I didn't want to deliver you the engine under 400. That's why we had it on the dynamometer for three weeks, trying a few things here and there, tried different carburetors, we tried different intake manifolds, different spark plugs, different timings, you name it, we've done it all. Then we said, you know what, when my brother came by, gaskets came in, done deal. Here we go. And I think you and I were saying too, the biggest surprise of it all, the 400 is a great number. It is. That torque curve. Yeah. And that 500 plus torque is just, yeah. I can't even believe it. All right, I'll try to get you that steering box, Nick. My pleasure. Send Thank it over, you, okay? Send it Bye. over. Okay. Good. Logan, it was a pleasure to meet you. Can you drop me back off at school? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll just go home today. Good idea. All right, thanks guys. Next garage. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>